Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, for my for my people that see me on Saturday, this is nothing new. I so good family. I told you wait a minute. I told you we gonna have a no 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 Mr. Akbar. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, Agba, not yet. Uh, <laughs> leave uh, leave not, Agba alone. Not just yet. Who is it? <laughs> uh, not yet, okay? Bye-bye. All right, because first, she's, I got to have a little of this here myself first. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. We have to dip in first and see if it's all right. Then we let the family join us. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Mm -hmm. How you doing? I finally get a chance to get some sugar because, boy, I tell you, it's been a long time since I had any sugar. You know that? Mm. Oh, that's anyway, too bad. no C and H here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Family, we have tonight Miss Cheryl Dockery of Computers and You, but tonight it's not about computers and you. Cheryl, this is your life. <laughs> Say hello to our family, please, Cheryl. Hi, So Beat family. How are you doing? It's all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good? All good. Okay. Well, Cheryl, you know, as I mentioned to you before on the Night Talk Jones, we like to know about you. We like to know what makes you tick. How did you get to tick? Uh, start ticking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Cheryl, let's go back to when you were first coming up as a little girl. You know, where did you come from and what happened and... What age? Yes. What age are you <laughs> dealing with? What age? Are you dealing with what? Excuse me. Well, see, We're talking about from the time they threw it. <laughs> as far back as you can remember. Well, I, I grew up in Oakland. I was, uh, I was born on March 21st, 1948. Oh, you're just a young baby. In Herrick Hospital. Okay. Okay, but I was living in West Oakland at the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now, where did you go to elementary school or preschool? Oh, I went to a number of elementary schools, but uh, my main elementary school doesn't exist any longer, and only those of us that have lived in Oakland, California long enough will even remember this school, and it was called Tompkins Elementary School, um, which was an excellent school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. excellent school, but it was uh, torn down when they did all the Getting ready for free yeah. aids and extensions. Yeah, it was torn down. The recreation center was torn down and all that. Now, during that time, Cheryl, uh, who was your influence or at that early age, uh, what type of inf persons that you kind of cater to to say, I kind of look at this person would like to be like this? Who is there anyone that you could remember that? Uh, at a young age? At a you young age who kind of directed you? Well, uh, my mother was my main uh, guidance counselor, <laughs> I'll say. Okay. Uh, I have a, a, a aunt, and in fact, I have well, several aunts, but I have uh, one that's still with us that uh, I kind of wanted to be like. Mm -hmm. um, but why? But not what? for no, no, the, what did the you same see? reasons. I probably should have brought a picture of her. Okay. And, and you would be able to see why. Um, because of the, well, I'll put it this way. She could pass for white if she wanted to. Okay. 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 And, and, and I was like a, a in-between. I wasn't white. I wasn't black. So I had a problem. Okay. And Woo! <laughs> folks, this is good now because you didn't understand the folks that was kind of in that in-between <laughs> stage. You thought they had it going on, thought they had it easy. Cheryl. Was it oh, hard? Oh, it was, oh, I, it was terrible. And I, didn't, I, I never did understand Name calling? It. Oh, yeah, yellow banana and uh, all kinds of things like that, half-breed mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, I had to have a lot of fights. Yes. A lot of fights. Now, what did that do in terms of building your character, your personality uh, coming up that way? What, how did that develop your outlook on life hmm. or influence your outlook on life? Well, until I was guided in the right direction, I was very bitter. I hated my people. Mm -hmm. uh, I related more to white people mm -hmm. than I did to black people because I didn't have to go through pretty much the name calling. Name stuff. calling, not, like, as, not as overt, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not that way. Uh, so I mean, that it was hard. It was really hard. Mm -hmm. It was really hard. Um, did that hurt you? 
I mean, did it really? Because uh, I'm looking at your eyes right now, and your eyes well. is kind of misting up a little <laughs> bit here. Folks, her eyes are actually <laughs> misting as she's going back. And remember, this is one thing I told you about the night talks. Now we get down to the bone. <laughs> well, well, it, it sometimes it did. Sometimes it did. It depends on who it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you have to overcome things like that. Mm -hmm. But it did. Yeah, my eyes are getting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, you know, I'm about to have to go and get you a little. I know. You that's go okay. Get your napkin? That's okay. You just had. I just had a flashback on, on, when it was really hurtful. Now. Uh, you want to get? Let me get you. No, no, no. I'm fine. Okay. No, I'm fine. This is real um, TV, y'all. <laughs> I mean, she's actually. I mean, see this one over there. They can see for real. I mean, once you know, you look over oh, here. Oh, really? See, that's one. Well, I mean, it was too bad it happened. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a flashback on on the, the most hurtful one, but uh, like I said, it depends on who it is, and if it's uh, it hurts more with relatives and close friends. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, a lot of times they didn't realize that it was hurtful. Mm -hmm. So I became bitter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very bitter. You know, family, you know, just to take a moment, you know, many times we are not aware. You know, we may be a certain complexion, and we may not be uh, comfortable with that complexion. And we talked never about it. With my yeah. So we, we talk my about that. Uh, you know, you could be, quote, to you, too dark or. Uh, folks, you may not have realized it, but you can be too light at a certain point, and it takes time to grow into your skin because there's an adjustment when you're black, and when you're black, there's this rainbow thing. And uh, when you fall in between different spectrums, you can have a problem. So well, I had plenty of problems, but overall, it made me tougher. I had to learn how to fight for sure. Mm -hmm. I had to learn, and I had to learn how to fight good where it took more than one to get me. Okay. And that's how good it was. Okay. Um, but I, that was a conditioning that I had to, thank you, Jackie. Um, that was a conditioning that I guess I was supposed to face and live through uh, in order to survive out here. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it was hard. It was hard. It's hard, it's hard being... Um, a yellow banana. <laughs> so what was it like? What was it like knowing that as a youngster uh, you were going to uh, day in and day out because kids can be cruel and, very, and, and family members can be cruel. Very, on, very, you know, yes. not really. So what was it like trying to get your education and going to school and knowing that you had to go through those taunts? Uh, it was hard. It was definitely hard. And, but one of the things that was instilled in me, especially for my mother, is that I had to get those books together. And uh, because I didn't want, I didn't want to be a cook and I didn't want <laughs> the things that the women in my family did. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do those things. And uh, my mother instilled in me, I better go to school, better do something, mm -hmm. you better learn a trade, yes. you better do something. <coughs> Get that together. Huh? Right, or else you're going to be washing somebody's dishes or cleaning out somebody's toilet stool. Mm -hmm, <laughs> That's mm -hmm. exactly how she told me. And I didn't want to do that, so I had to kind of get my homework together as well as uh, try to hang with my friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, type thing. I think I gained more control um, over my my thoughts as far as my complexion uh, right when I was getting ready to go to high school. Yeah, I was going to get together and ask you about, uh, let's go up into junior high school. <clears throat> junior high school was constant fights and constantly in Still trouble. at that point? Constantly, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I still had to fight in high school. Mm -hmm. I, I had to fight, as a matter of fact, I gained the best friend. So we're talking about that way, the year 60 something. I mean, we're talking about 62, 60, uh, 62, I 63. graduated early in 66 from Berkeley High. Okay. So um, 60, uh, 65. You know, I mean, so uh, folks, uh, we're not talking about some way back then. We're talking about what's real, what's mm, still kicking. I had to fight. And you probably still have some family members, folks, that uh, believe it or not, uh, are still going through this color s situation and uh, you know we're looking at again she's too light or she's too dark or he's too dark or he's too light 
And believe me, if you were in those person's skin, you would find out it's not what you see from the outside, what they're feeling from the inside is different. Really it is. Um, well, now they see me cry because they didn't get to see me cry then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Couldn't cry then. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do that then. No, no, no. Um, that sure would mess up things. But uh, overall, I, I, I think I, because I gained the best friend out of the whole thing, uh, who wasn't a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was being jumped by five people. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard her voice. You know, I was doing the best I could there. Yes. I heard her voice. Five as I was kind of tough, though. That was, that was a tough one yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, and I heard her voice as I was going down. She said, oh, hell no, this is not fair. Yes. Now, she's, this is an athletic type person. Okay. And I met her in junior high. She came to Bur Burbank and broke down near every record we had there. Okay. Even mine. That's why I didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> you had your other nightmare going yeah, for you. Uh. <laughs> right. She broke while I was working on that standing broad jump. Yeah. You know, two <laughs> two inches or something from the record, and here she going jump six inches. <laughs> I couldn't stand her. You know, but she ended up being my best friend because when I heard her said, "Oh hell no, this ain't fair," I heard her say, "Bam!" and somebody. <laughs> 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 Somebody dropped, she's able to handle probably three, four herself, yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, I made sure she was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, let me help you do some broad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure she was my best friend. Uh, and, yeah, and we, we, we're still friends today. Okay. Um, but I, I had to go through things like that. And if it hadn't have been for individuals that didn't believe in double teen and, and all that kind of stuff, I probably wouldn't have, have made it through a lot of things mm -hmm. because that wasn't the first time that I've had to go through that, you know. And then, see, from that point, it, it um, <laughs> like I said, I, I didn't care anymore, and I wasn't tripping on it anymore that's because that's at the time I started carrying a 38. Okay. Right? So there After was, the so, jump on, yeah. So there is, and, and family, see, this is what we're, we're coming from. We let you know that there is a reason that we are here at 2002. Now, we're going to get there. <laughs> but you see, there is a reason why people say things and, and, and react to certain things, and, you know, we'll get there. Now, when you uh, left Burbank or at the junior high school level mm -hmm. and you got to high school, mm -hmm. um, which teacher or which counselor kind of got in your ear and started directing you or started getting you some idea that uh, you have something special going on, Cheryl? I had one following me around. I, if I, I left Burbank, and went to Berkeley High, and that woman was at Berkeley High when I got there. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone knew this sister, her name was Mrs. Tucker, and she's well. She was well known. Uh, Mrs. Tucker, she was tough. She was my typing teacher uh, originally, and uh, and then the, the, she followed me up to Burbank, <laughs> up, up to Mary College. Yeah, no. <laughs> I feel about it. <laughs> Your guardian. <though. laughs> you know, and I have to thank her. Anytime I see her, I, I hope she's still with us. Uh, but when I first met her and seen, I, I sprung my finger. Yes. And she says, in this type of class, she says, well, did the doctor say, it, is it broken? I said, well, no. He says it's sprung. He had a little sprung. She said, well, take that off and go and type. I won't grade your paper. <laughs> <laughs> she did it just like <laughs> 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 I looked at, you know, sisters are pretty tough, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, I went on and did that, and then I noticed that my time writing, even though I didn't have to turn in my paper, I typed better, and then after my fingers loosened up, I didn't even feel the pain, and mm -hmm. then I realized that after even springs I got in after that, I kept it moving, because yes. I, I know that that helps. Yes, so for <laughs> folks out there that. with arthritis, a little rheumatism right, and uh, yeah and and those type of Sliding. things yeah <laughs> you may not realize this <laughs> that when you have that situation to work out mm -hmm. and to stretch and to actually go through a workout program will make you feel better even though you may have arthritic condition mm -hmm. and that's how I dealt with my sprains you know what make sure that I'm mm -hmm. keeping moving because as long as the blood is flowing I guess you didn't have the pain yes Whatever, and then eventually I grew well, you well, we are in high school. Now, see, I was one of those children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of 
planned. It was illogical now. Mm -hmm. Because I, I knew how many points I have to have to graduate from high school and, and all this kind of stuff. I kind of planned my grades and okay. stuff like that. I knew how many F's I can get all the way to graduate from high school. Okay. So if there's any teacher out there that messes with me, they in trouble. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll disrupt the whole doggone classroom. And it don't have to mess with me. It could be somebody I like. Don't even. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how crazy I was. <laughs> how crazy I was. Now, you see how well, our children are, are kind of crazy. <laughs> like that if they don't get turned around, yeah. you know. But I was crazy like that. Now, the only thing I didn't plan was to get pregnant while I was in high school. You got pregnant when you were in high school. I, was, I graduated across the stage. I had to graduate early. Okay. And... I will have to say my family got my high school diploma for me. Okay. Now, now when you say that, give us an understanding as to uh, how, do you, how did your family get your high school diploma well, for you? In this particular class, he wasn't, I, I couldn't get, after I've gotten pregnant, I was, I was, in order for me to graduate early, I couldn't get any Fs. Okay. Mess your whole thing up. Mess my whole thing up. I already messed up. Yeah. The man can't stand me yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. all this stuff. Okay. And so uh, I was just going to give up. I said, well, forget it. I'll go back. I'll just go and have my baby. I'll go back to school later on. My aunt, who is not with us now, she went up to the school and started talking to folk. And so the teacher uh, told her that I can make up what the work that I hadn't done. Yes. But then he had all this whole other stuff <laughs> that, didn't have, <laughs> that didn't have nothing to do. He wanted me to read two or three more of the books, and I had to do two or three that wasn't even in the thing. Yeah. And I, I said I wasn't going to do it. Okay. I, I just wasn't going to do it. So everyone in my family, even my younger brother, did the best he could in deciphering in the short period of time, my mother, my aunt, they all took it. I read the books that was assigned. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then my reports on that. Yeah. And they all wrote reports, and they told me to transfer that into my handwriting, and I didn't. And you didn't? No. Why? Simply because I knew that the papers that I did write were good. Okay. Okay. And um, he... <laughs> And I knew that I was giving them a message okay. that my family is the one who helped me with this because I, re I still wasn't going to do it. I can't remember the man's name. Okay. I still wasn't going to do it. And uh, he passed me, barely. He gave me a D. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fine. That's all hey, I needed. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't give it to help. <laughs> That's all I needed, okay. and I graduated early. I had to graduate early, and which is a it came out to be a blessing. You know, the Lord works things out because I ended up having that child premature a month after my graduation. Whoa! I graduated midterm January um, from Berkeley High. I think we were the last midterm graduation, mm -hmm. and uh, I had him in February. What you say? Mm -hmm. Sure did. He was six months. Six months. Six, six months. Six That's months. real premature. Pre mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a six month premature. He, on he that. only That's weighed six pounds, uh, five and three fourths, six pounds, six, uh, six pounds, six ounces. So he was on that, uh, what you call it, preemie baby. He was a preemie baby, and he had to stay in the hospital for two months uh, while he's in the incubator and all that stuff. You know, he's like a little rat. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's real small. That's your I'm looking at you now. That's what I'm saying now. <laughs> you know, if, if you're this size now as a woman, what size were you back then? Oh, I was weighing, I weighed uh, between 105 and 107, uh, all the way up until I was about 45. I mean... I mean, when you was pregnant, I mean, you must have been about, like, that big. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I, I was pretty much all baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But, see, both of my children were preemies. You know, question here. Now, you've gone through this high school stage, and you've, you've gotten through this. When did Cheryl Dockery start to develop this attitude, this mentality 
uh, not where you are now, but what was the beginning stages of your development after you became a woman? Well, I ran into this other teacher. <laughs> Another teacher? That I wanted to try to get out of this class, and she went from down south, and she was going to be hard. Mm -hmm. I was about 22 then. I was going to Merritt College. Her name is Dr. Erickson. Oh, Dr. Erickson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just had her on the air. Uh, and, uh, she may be watching right now. She, she told may me, be, she but told me she, she watches was my a show. tough one. If you, if you, if you, you either going to hang in there and do it or get out of her class. You know, I must say this. Um, during my, my Jones Society programming, uh, I've had so many, as I've told Professor Arrington, that I've had so many mem people, members, who talked about uh, Dr. Cecilia Arrington. And meeting her, uh, you see this black woman walk in, and she's a tall woman. Mm -hmm. And she has such a tall, regal. proud. Yes, just such a regal yes. bearing to herself yes. that when you think of a princess or a queen, you know, this woman just walks in, and you just are swept in her beauty. Just the aura is just total Absolutely. beauty right. and regalness and, and almost like royalty. Mm -hmm. And that's the way everybody talks to her, talk about her. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because, see, when you're taught by her, you're taught. You're taught. I see that. And, see, if I hadn't have mm -hmm. taken any of Dr. Arrington's classes, in which I pretty much have taken them all, uh, I don't think I'd be in this, the mindset that I am now. Okay. Because, see, you have to know about where you came from. Yes, <laughs> yes, you know. yes. And so uh, she's teaching African-American, uh, Afro-American history is what they were uh, calling it at that time. And uh, if I hadn't have taken her class, she was the first class, I wouldn't have continued on. Mm -hmm. And she was a hard, she was a tough one. <laughs> oh, Lord help, I didn't want to take this class. <laughs> and when I was explaining this woman to my mama, <laughs> it didn't do a bit of good. <laughs> no help there. <laughs> no, my mother was more concerned of me taking her class and, dr and drop everything else. Take this one. She recognized. Yes, she and she recognized I need that discipline yes. too. Yes. Okay. Because she's a yeah she's a, a somewhat of a disciplined teacher. When yes. you, she she means business in her class. You do, if you're doing an oral report because I've seen her sit people down, and tell them you, you haven't done your research. Don't come in my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't done your work. <laughs> I feel you on that. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, she's so you have to get yourself together because she'll she'll call you on mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it was hard. That was a hard <laughs> class. And then, but once, after you get into it, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, once you get into the discipline, it becomes easier. Well, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, give you a chance to uh, think a little bit more about this, Professor Arrington, and where you took off from there, and give more to our Soul Beat Night Talk Jones audience. And yes, family, this is... The lady that I tell you is my nightmare. It's, it's, when I say that, it's, it's almost like uh, being a professional athlete and knowing at nighttime before a game that, hey, I'm the greatest thing since cornbread. <laughs> but tomorrow I've got to face Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do? <laughs> well, well, thanks a lot, Billy. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> But anyway, so be family, we'll be right back after we uh, pay some bills, because that's what the commercial does. Welcome back, so be family. Um, Billy Jones will be here in a few moments. Now, this is what happens when you have one person running the studio trying to push all these buttons and come back and host. And uh, you'll never see this in, in any other television network. They have about 40 or 50 people trying to do with Billy. Uh, I <laughs> love it, though. Jones you know, but you know what? I mean, I've had people come in and say, Billy, can I help you? I said, nah. You know, I mean, I enjoy uh, doing it all. I really, really do. Chuck taught me, you know, I mean, yes, indeed. Um, I tried to fight it. He kicked my butt enough times while I started to enjoy it. <laughs> And, you know, you got to learn this. You got to do that. You got to, got to, got to. I don't want to jack. I mean, I want to be out front. Of, but now, I, you know, I like the buttons pushing, even though sometimes the buttons don't get pushed right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Chuck. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I just enjoy all of this, and uh, I like being well, self-contained. Well, that's good because, see, when you enjoy the work you do, mm -hmm. it's not like you're working. Yeah. And, you know, uh, plus, what gave me the idea about the Night Talk Jones and coming out here and doing it this way was, you remember Alfred Hitchcock? Of course. Do you remember how he started off his shows all the time? He come, good evening, ladies. I'm trying to but remember, go back. <laughs> yeah, but remember, it never had anybody on camera. You always had a screen. Then you had, then you had, the after a while, then you had him walk out into the silhouette You're after right. a period of time, and then it was like, a sideways. You're right. Good evening, ladies. You know, so this that I do for folks saying, well, I don't know why I do it like that. Uh, family, think about it for a minute. This is the same style major TV utilized in the that. day. So I never thought about that's that. That's the idea. You're right. That's right. So that's why I like to come out here, start it off with, and then come out on stage. Okay. I can understand that. You feel me on that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See? Even the audience. <laughs> Even the audience. So if you didn't know and you thought that, that this was something strange or something like if they had more money and more folks, if they had more money and had more folks, I still would want to have the opening come up with nobody on the screen per se and then come out and say what I have to say. Okay. And speaking of that, what do you have to say now that Professor Arrington have got gotten through with you now? Well, of course, like I said, you have to learn your, your, where you're from, your history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... You I, became very pro-black. <laughs> well, that's... I've been I mean, called worse pro, names. <laughs> I mean, pro-pro-black. <laughs> uh, I, I guess you would call it that. Um, uh, I... Black power! Yes, yes, sister. <laughs> I was wondering when it was going to come on out of you. You know, she's been holding it back. I was wondering, you know. Uh. Yeah, I was, I was uh, among that, uh, that era as well. Um, now, and how did they bring you into that activism at that time? Were you at Merritt College, and et cetera? Well, it was purely accidental. I started uh, participating... Um, downhill before they went uphill mm -hmm. uh, with some Street. of the yeah, Black Panther Party members and um, got to know some of them and became close friends of Huey P. Newton. In fact, families are close. My family, I didn't even know my family. I already knew their family. But anyway, um, then when I went up on the hill, now I was forced to go up on the hill, okay, by the way, because I had applied for the loans and grants, they told us if you want this, this money, you got to come up here to get mm -hmm, it. So mm -hmm. I had to go up on the hill, okay. uh, which turned out to be a blessing in a way because I learned a lot. But um, I became a part of the, um, uh, associated with the Black Student Union, union and uh, of course the Black Panther Party was involved. They were very much involved by the time we got up on the hill. Uh, with a lot of the whole politics of the school that they were involved in. And uh, one day, uh, one of the Black Panther Party members came to and got me out of a classroom and uh, told me that they wanted me to be part of the, uh, the student union, not the black, you know, the associate of students. I was going to be a senate. They wanted me, and I said, what are you talking about? I'm in class. And all this. I said, well, OK. I went, and before I could sit down good, I was uh, motion made second. <laughs> <laughs> Black Panther Party had taken over the whole thing. And what happened was uh, they didn't have, and they had to do it right real quick. So that's the reason why they came and got me out of class. Uh, they didn't have a Black Panther Party member on campus mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, that they can vote in that had a 3.5 grade point average. Oh, no, not miss. I'm going to get by with an F. <laughs> <laughs> well, that Three, was then. That's what I say. Now, so now you're a 3.5 student? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, okay. I was higher than that. But um, they came and got me out of class, and I ended up in the, in the Senate. Uh, they gave me assignments and things that I was supposed to be doing, and I was, I was never a Black Panther Party member. 
And then I became closer to uh, the servant Hugh P. Newton, and he had me on assignments, doing okay. things. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that he wanted to prove, I can say, is that there was an infiltrator. Okay, there was somebody there he didn't trust. And um, and how he was going to do that, somebody was giving out the names of the actual uh, Black Panther Party members okay. that, that's on record. Okay. Okay. And, um, and uh, he was using me to, in a way to find out. And, and, and how he was going to do that was I was never going to be a member. Okay. Of, of a written recorded member. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I wasn't ever. And it, it, it came out pretty much around the time I was taking his brother's class at this time. And uh, Melvin Newton, if anyone knows, I've taken a number of his classes as well. But this class was his prison population class. And he chose a few people out of his class to uh, interact with prisoners up in Soledad. Mm -hmm. They had an organization that the prisoners had started called the African American Community Awareness Group or something like that. And uh, it, it was set up that we were able to go out to Soledad on Wednesday nights, and, and because that's when they had their meeting, yes. and we were we can come because we were going to be a part of it. And we became members. We had cards mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. like that. Now the first time we went out to the prison, it was it was really fine. They didn't send us through any kind of changes. We got to take the papers in there. We got to just whoa, we was off the hook. <laughs> And the second time we went in, they kept eliminating Black Panther Party members, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, each time we went back, someone else could not go in. Okay. Okay? And uh, <laughs> finally, the last time the last time we went up, I was the only one that was... Uh, allowed to go in? Pretty much uh, uh, allowed to go in. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, <laughs> They knew I wasn't going to come back the next next time because uh, of what they were going to do. They used int intimidation. Uh, they told me that um, they were aware that I wasn't because they eliminated all the writ written Black Panther Party me members. They knew who they were actually were. Mm -hmm. And they told me they knew that I wasn't a Black Panther Party member, but I was associated with a subversive group. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I kind of played kind of dumb with them. I said, subversive group, you know, ex explain this to me. I'm a, a behind these prison walls acting a fool here by yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, explain this to me. What, what do you mean by subversive group? And they told me the Black Panther Party. And I said, well, okay. I said, okay, Black Panther. I said, well, would you consider the Muslims subversive? They considered the Muslims mm -hmm. subversive. I said, oh. I said, okay. I said, I'm getting the black side of it now. I said, well, now, would you consider the Ku Klux Klan a subversive group? Wrong, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> wrong <laughs> question. Because I'm trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this mm -hmm. is how I'm getting at it. Wrong <laughs> question. Okay. You know, um, so basically what they did is they went back to my juvenile record and brought that up okay. on me. Okay. And using, using that uh, intimidation uh, tactic, which did not work. It was supposed to be sealed, by the way, uh, but it wasn't. And at that time, um, my father was in prison. Okay. Okay. He um, he'd been in prison since '58. Okay. And I think I've mentioned it on television before. Mm -hmm. He shot two police officers right here in Oakland, California, okay. in, in the latter '50s. So you know that's a no, 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 Let no, no. Go down in whistle. Because that is when they were bringing up what is called corn-fed Southern white boys. Whoa. From the South, if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> folks. I use the word corn fed. <laughs> uh, some of the other folks in our days used a different terminology, but uh, they were them white boys from the South who believed in controlling you blackums. Well, that was a bad move for him to make there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, after they, the, the intimidation of me, it didn't work. She says, I, I see that your father is in, in prison. It sure would be. 
how, it surely would be awful if something would happen to him. Mm-hmm. In, in that, oh, in wow. that effect. Oh, wow. She would be terrible if something would happen to him. And uh, no, I didn't go back. Yes. And they knew that that would get me. Yes. You know. Yes. And. Uh, oh, that was cold. Yeah. Quite cold. Quite cold. But uh, I still had interaction with, uh, and as a matter of fact, Soledad had a riot in lockdown after that. Okay. I have to get the years together on that, and you'll know it was within a week they had a lockdown. Mm -hmm. You know, after I uh, had my uh, last (laughs) conversation there, uh, they didn't like it. Now, family, you hold on because we are going to allow you, of course, to get in and have some great conversations with Ms. Cheryl Dockery of Computers and You as well. And, uh, but we just want to get you an update as to the woman behind the computers and you, okay? Well, it came out that there had to be an infiltrator within the Black Panther Party mm-hmm. that had been telling folks who was really truly members and who, because they had to have the, the actual information. And uh, also he proved, and what she wanted to prove, that you can be guilty by association. Yeah, that's something. Now, you've gone through this process. When did you become uh, making those steps to become the person that you are today? I mean, you do so much for folks. <laughs> uh, I mean, you've got a multi-dimensional. Well, that, started, that, that actually started at, at Merritt College as well. Mm. Uh, uh, I was I was taught well I took pretty much all of the African American classes politics and the whole bit so therefore when I was in my African American politics they made me go and work on a, a political campaign okay. so therefore I'm getting in to uh, the politics making sure I'm registered to vote yes and that whole thing so uh, the process really ac- actually really started at Merritt Co- College campus with my African American instructors. Okay. Starting okay. with Dr. Arrington. Starting with Dr. Arrington. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Arrington. Because believe me, she was here. She said she watches the show. You know, made me feel oh, really she proud. Oh, she knows I love her. She yes, love yes. Her. Now, uh, Miss Cheryl Dockery. She's now, probably fussing at me. She's always. <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss Cheryl Dockery, we have you here tonight, and of course, uh, uh, you have your show, Computers and You. Mm-hmm. Okay. But before we go to that show, still. Now, what was your first experience? Uh, like when you first made your first Soul Beat Ball? When you first came to your first Soul Beat Ball? I had a ball. <laughs> 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 I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoy it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a ball. And um, because I'm in business, I, I know about networking, so I use that time also to network. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm one yeah, that's I'm out that there out. all the time trying to find out what's going on so I can pass out some cards or something. I found it out. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah, 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 wait. I found it out. <laughs> <laughs> what can you well, say? I have to be out there. And then Merritt College, I believe, was, was the, uh, uh, the college campus that helped me most uh, in getting involved into community affairs. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, my instructors forced me to do that. Mm-hmm. That was a part of their grades and stuff. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you, you get grades because that's a part of their curriculum. Okay, that they okay. Got going this, but you have to do things like that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Dr. Aaron Arrington had us going to the church. He had us going to the Black Muslim Mosque because that's a part of our history. Yes, You yes. know, so I can see where they have that in there program and and they grade you on it you know and so I had to participate in things like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because of my african-american now when did you become so involved uh, with persons who may have been out of the workforce and uh, became this person to show them that this system is getting ready to push them to the side and they need to become prepared to work when did you start picking up on that and start working that type of system or trying to influence people? I became an eligibility worker in 1980. Okay. And uh, I 
pr pr prior to that, I was working with the courts. Mm -hmm. I trans I left the courts and came to social services, and I was told by the courts I was doing it backwards. They were from social services, and they came to the courts because it's, I was just doing it backwards. Okay, you know? okay. <laughs> but anyway, it came out that I did it the right way. I became an eligibility worker, and um, I had a caseload of a hundred and. Whoa. What did we have then? A hundred and twenty something, hundred and thirty something of AFDC uh, recipients. A to A to family with dependent children, okay. which is CalWORKS, same thing, mm -hmm, CalWORKS, mm -hmm. but AFDC. Um, and that's I, I, that's pretty much where it started. Um, I, I would try to encourage individuals, even though I'm in eligibility, and a lot of people try to associate us with being social workers yes okay we do not deal with your social problems okay it's all about whether you are eligible to get this here money food stamps a medical or not okay, okay. <laughs> that's it okay and we have to make sure that the paperwork is in line saying that this is the reason why I'm sending making sure she get a check next month okay because the paperwork is in line she don't have nothing okay okay uh, and that's all we do you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. But I would take some time and talk to uh, people and uh, encourage them to go to school and say things even before the, the reform came out. You know, there are things you have to do. I let them know that I was once on welfare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and there's a whole bunch of people in this building that were once on welfare <laughs> that are working. Well, so. you know, what I want to do right now, I want to let our audience hear from you uh, a few minutes about that transition and uh, I'm going to give the floor and turn over the stage to Ms. Cheryl Dockery for a couple of minutes to talk to the family and to the world um, in a couple of two or three minutes about that issue right there. Can you do that? Uh, yes. Uh, and I'll be right back with you. Uh, mainly I, I can say I'm a product of governmental programs. Uh, I was a WIND graduate. That's pretty much of a, a training program. Uh, I completed the program in three months. Uh, it was supposedly to be a six-month program. The lady that was doing the training had me complete an Alameda County application. And uh, she told me that she wanted to make sure that I knew how to complete applications. I'm, I had no idea she was going to turn it in to anybody. Uh, and what she did, she turned it in. And the next thing I knew, I started getting uh, what Alameda County call is certifications uh, and, and things like that, notices to come take tests and, and all that type stuff. And I don't know how many applications she herself had turned in, but I got a number of notices there for clerical positions. And um, I somehow, I, I wasn't hired uh, through those notices the CEDA program kicked in first because I was on lists of those other programs. That's how the system works. You're on lists, and you may be on a list for a year before you, you're called. But the CEDA program kicked in where I was placed on a county position uh, as a clerk one, I believe it was, clerk something. And uh, it could have been clerk typist. I had to type, so I was mm -hmm. probably clerk typist. And um, what happens is they give you a year. At that time, how they had the CETA program set up, they give you a year to um, get yourself together, pass a test, and get on. And, and, and because you you expire from CETA. Okay. Well, I ex I, I passed the test and, and, and ended up a full fledged clerk. Now, one of the hurtful things is what I want to say. Um, as a CETA employee, you can, uh, I was considered not an Alameda County employee. I wasn't going to get any uh, union representation, and therefore I was treated cruelly by some Alameda County employees. Ooh Hearing things, well, she ain't no real in, uh, county employee anyway. She ain't, uh, oh, they just was, they was just going on and on and on. Almost like being a kid again. Almost like being a kid again. But uh, 
Thank you, Jesus. I was uh, blessed to um, one of the jobs that I had applied for was actually a job that I was qualified for, but it would have been a promotional job. So all those was that back there talking. I was gone, you know, within that year's period of time. Yes to a better job than some of them had. Okay. 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 So that, you know, I, 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 that gave me the lift up. And so the next thing I knew, I was just taking tests after tests. And the next thing I knew, I was an eligibility worker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> because yes. Because I left the courts. Yes. Uh, I went, I've been at health care. I, I started at the courts. I went to health care. That's where my real job came. Then I went back to the courts as a data input. And I was there six months before they called me for the eligibility worker, and I was on that list that long, for yes. six months. And then I was at social services, and I was an eligibility worker up until 1988 when I became uh, an employment counselor. I was one of the first 14 employment counselors that they've chosen in Alameda County. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I noticed that she's always giving her praises. <laughs> And, uh, and it, it went me, on from there. And by the way, family, we're going to open up our telephone lines. Uh, it's about this time. And so we're going to invite you to join us in our conversation tonight. So if you want to make those calls and we can interact because we're pretty close to being up to date. And, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so we're pretty close to being up to date. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we go along now, and we'll take your calls and we'll filter you right in. And for those who don't know, uh, this is Ms. Cheryl Dockery of Computers and You. And uh, yes, family, you've heard me talk and say about my nightmare. She's a gorgeous, beautiful, fine, but she's still my nightmare. Well, thank you, Billy. Because she's beating me, y'all. She's beating me, and I'm, and I'm used to, I'm, I'm used to being on top. I'm not going. <laughs> I, I play humble. I play humble, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ferocious that. competitor. Okay. <laughs> so you can feel me when I know I'm number two. <laughs> it, it don't feel right, you know. <laughs> it ain't, and as they say, it ain't nothing I can do about it. But you can, excuse me, Cheryl, send in those checks, those cashier checks, those money orders to P.O. Box 5156, zip code 94605. Help a brother out. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> that's in, in the favor of Night Talk Jones, okay? All right. Yeah, I especially want that lady so, that called and said that she don't look at nothing but Billy Jones. Uh, <laughs> she, and, and, but she ain't sent no money in before. Oh, 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 she's supposed to be sending some money in to Billy Jones. All right. That's, yeah. Let's see what you say here. Okay. Call her. Hello. Hello. Yes, Hi. you're live. Hi, how you doing, Miss Dockery? Hi. Yeah, I just, I see you all the time at the credit union over there off uh, uh, Hagenberger. Off of Hagenberger? Yeah. But next time I see I just, I'm just going to walk up and give you a hug, and so don't be afraid because I'm a brother out here. I like the way that you just laid it out because a lot of people are not real about the things that really went down. And for a black woman, you know, don't. Wait, brother, uh, what you do? Your phone kind of shook mm -hmm. up for a minute. Your phone kind of got shaky for a minute. Yeah. So take that last phrase, uh, sentence that you were saying, and would you repeat that, please? I have a 16-year-old daughter. You had a 16-year-old daughter. Uh, and that, uh, you know, she don't realize the things that she's missing in life right now because she tends to want to hang out with... Yeah, okay, we lost you when you said she tended to want to hang out with what? Her mother. Her mother. And hang out with her mother. What do you mean, hang out with her mother? Well, she she's not getting the proper rest or sleep in order to go to school to get the education that she actually needs, and she she's lacking a lot of discipline at, in her life right now. Um, I try to go to court to get my daughter because my household is a disciplined household. Everything I do, I have two boys. Uh, here at my house, in my household with me now. And I try to tell her, you know, if you come and live with me, I have rules. My rules is you're in the house by 8.30, 9 o'clock, you got to go to bed. Because that's the way I was brought up that's, that's by my rules. parents, mm -hmm. you know, in order to go to school the next day. Well, she's got to repeat a grade, which is bad, but it is bad. 
But you know what, my brother? Yes, it sir. sounds like when you see Cheryl up in the personal time that you may have something yeah, to talk you, with her about, okay? Sure to, if you see me, yeah. And, and, and no problem with the hugs because I'm a hugger. It's, all, it's known all over that I'm a hugger. Okay. So there's no problem <laughs> with that. But, uh, I, you know, when, when, when I see you, I just want, you know, if, if I have her with me, I want you to just talk to her and just, you know, give her some words of encouragement. All right, brother, before you go, what's your first name? My name is Robert. Robert? Yeah. Okay, but because I was going to say, before you walk up to the lady and, and, and just reach out and start hugging, I would suggest that you say, uh, Cheryl, I'm Robert, and I talked to you on Soul Beat. Then get your hug. All he has to do is say Soul Beat. All right, partner? Yes, sir. All, All right, brother. Say Soul Thank Beat. you. Peace now. All right. All right. Five six nine five nine two seven. And my very special guest tonight is my real good friend. Ms. Cheryl Dockery, and I'm just really happy to have her tonight. I'm, I right. am concerned. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking about my behavior. I was, I was an absolute insane fool <laughs> when I, you know, and really, and, and, and what's so crazy about it, I, I figured old people were crazy. Okay. Y'all crazy. Y'all yeah. don't know what's going on. You're just stupid. Yes. <laughs> sound, like my, sound like my daughter. <laughs> and that's how I, I feel. Yeah. You know, my mother was stupid. You know, mothers are just plain stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't know nothing. <laughs> don't know nothing. <laughs> and so I, I, I am kind of concerned uh, uh, because I know that the children out there, they're, they're, that, that's their behavior, and you have to get out of that. Um, now, see, I don't know about anybody else. See, they didn't change these laws on this here child abuse stuff. Yes, yes. Well, see, I came from a single most of my life because my father was in prison yes single family um but my mother was one that say i brought you here take you out oh man. oh okay hi dame <laughs> <laughs> that's was. like that's like mm -hmm, i know what you're coming from mm -hmm. down my sister yeah I hi know. mom that's i call my my mother name is you know and, yeah, and, and she's still that way i tried to test it when i was uh uh, uh 25 i believe it was I, I i said something profane or whatever it was mm. and i saw that hand come up and the next thing i know my head was doing this hey. exorcist thing mm. you know it was going mm -hmm. <laughs> you know people say billy you know you have a soft speaking voice and yet when they've heard me in, my, in class they can really hear the other voice that i you have and um and i let them know that if you were if i'm around my mother even today, believe me, my voice will drop down an octave because <laughs> uh, she didn't play that coming on with that big voice. Even today, it's like, well, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep, Mom. Don't mess I, <laughs> I have a caller for you. Mm -hmm. Caller, go ahead. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is alaikum. Cheryl. And uh, Brother Billy Nighttown John. Yes, sir. I hope Sister Cheryl wins this year. But I'm. I'm uh, Billy Knight talk Jones is just winning too much. Winning too much, brother. Well, wait a minute, partner. You no, didn't have, no, you didn't have no. a problem with the Lakers winning three peats? No, I got to, I mean, let, let somebody else win, son. See, see. You know what I'm saying? I mean, is it you, because you, of you, you're already the greatest. Huh? You're already the greatest, brother. <laughs> I'll try to hold on to a job, brother. <laughs> <laughs> let, let somebody else be the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Akbar. Yes, sir. But, see, you, you know what I'm talking about when you know. <laughs> You know you want to be number one, and you don't slip to number two. Hey, brother. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I almost know what the New York, uh, 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 what's that New York, um, uh, the team uh, that played the Los Angeles. See, I don't remember the other team. Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Knicks. New Jersey Nets. New Jersey. Uh, Nets. No, Knicks. The, the the New Jersey, um, the one Jason Jason Kidd played for. Well, I don't even want to talk about Jason Kidd. <laughs> <laughs> See how it is when you become number two? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. Well, in, anyway, uh, Sister Cheryl, you you hold all your shows down. You be talking about some heavy wisdom. You be spreading it out there. It's too bad our people don't pick up uh, until it's all over with. Thank uh, you. They always say, I, "We'll do it tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a tendency to want to put off things, and, and and we end up too late when we get ready to do it. It's too late to do it. Too late to do it. It's all over. With. It's all over. Anyway, I just want to touch base with you. Uh, Mr. Akbar, before you go, uh, we need you to give uh, that telephone number for Naima. Yeah, for the Crowns? Yes, sir. Okay. It's area code 510-562-5026. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, my ears were stuffed. Yes, yeah, sir. Dig that one out there. 
Area code 510. Yes. 562-5026, Oakland, California. And uh, Na- Naima will be here this Saturday with a booth, correct? That's right. Okay. And I'll be doing my thing. Oh, yeah. So you're going to be performing, right? Yeah, we got, uh, I got, uh, 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 the name of my group is uh, the, the Originals. That sounds, originals. that sounds original. <laughs> the Originals. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, we're going to be throwing down, but we don't care who, who plays. We're going to be throwing down. All right. All right. So we're yeah. not playing around, brother. Well, if it gets too good, I might have to jump up there and do some improvision, improvision on my uh, joint. I know you can do it, brother, because I haven't seen you slide on. Uh, James Brown ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, brother. Hey, Mr. Osborne, uh, thank you very much. All right, let me give it to you again. Because the uh, time is closing in. That's right. My ears were stuffed. Area code 510-562-5026, and that's for Naima. All right. Because she is indeed a blessing. That's right. Peace. Thank you. So you see, this family loves you. That's why I can't win. <laughs> well, you have very much love for you as Call well, him. Billy. Yes, I was calling in. How y'all doing tonight? Hi. Hi. Uh, you know, I've been watching Cheryl for a while on Soul Beach. You know, I, I like her energy. Hi, Darnell. Hello, Cheryl. I like your energy. I like your spirit. And, and I kind of like, and I respect you a lot, too. You know, I, I've really heard some things in the past. You talk about the Panthers and the things you've done in the community. And, like, like I do a lot of things in the community. But I've I seen a show tonight on Soul Beach, and a, and a guy was talking at a, a, a Fred Price Church about that stigma on being light-skinned, how it was passed down. And like like by, by, by me working on reparations back in ninety five or ninety six, I learned about the black churches, all right. And by reading this stuff and doing my homework, doing my research, I know how the black churches came about and where way, way, way it's going on now is the way they planned that back in the seventeen hundreds. Mm-hmm. And the same thing going on right now in our community that I done read about in the books, in the history books, is going on in our churches right now. Mm-hmm. They all want to say, We're gonna wait on Jesus, like I tell them. We can do now until Jesus gets here. They keep talking about waiting on to Jesus until he get here. We got to do things now in the community until he get here, and whatever, whenever right. he get here. You know, so that's what I wanted to say. But the thing is, I, I went out today on the corner. The, the, the drug dealer's telling me, hey, man, these preachers run around here looking for you on this corner. They want to know where you at. So when they come again, tell us, tell us we can tell them where you at. They can find you, all right? All right. You know, I just want to say, sure, sure, it's a good work, Billy. See, you have a good show tonight. But you ain't going to win this year, Billy. Take care of yourself. <laughs> You see, you see, now, wait, now, you know, now, uh, now, see, now I'm going to say this, now see, now this is supposed to be my partner. Now he's a partner, see, no. this, Wait, this is supposed to be my partner. See, this is the way, this is Cheryl, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm talking about this nightmare thing. Even when your partners tell you, Billy, you know, you got it going on, my brother, we love you. I didn't turn around. How can you love me, my man, when you tell me that I'm number two? We giving it to Cheryl this year. Well, you know why, Billy? Because you know, Night Talk Jones don't come on enough at night anymore like he used to. So you're not going to win this year. All right. All right now. Thank you, Dave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you fair-weathered friends, I tell you. <laughs> Hi, Carla. How you doing? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, first of all, I always enjoy you, Billy. Thank you. But I always enjoy Cheryl. And Cheryl, I'm 57 years old. I'm older than you, but when I grow up, I want to be just like you. And also what I want to comment on is when you started um, in the um, welfare department as an eligibility technician, Mm -hmm. you mentioned on the show tonight that you were not classified as a social worker. (laughs) Excuse me. But at that time, I remember that's when they... Uh, when they got rid of the social workers and they were passing on that work on to the uh, eligibility work. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but see, uh, they had social... Well, see, what they did is they cut down on the... Well, see, the social workers originally did the eligibility and your social work stuff. So what they did is they cut down on having as many social workers and and they created the eligibility technician position. And so the eligibility technicians handle eligibility. And if you had a social work problem, then we refer you to the social worker, where you would have two different workers. Okay. And, and, and also at that time, 
uh, before that time, I was on welfare, and uh, you remember that movie called Claudine? Mm -hmm. I went through all of that. That well, was real. Have, you shouldn't have uh, gone through all that. See, no, that was before that eligibility thing came in effect. Well, that you, you that still shouldn't. Have. That was still AFDC. That came mainly that that looking up in your closets and up under your beds and and all that stuff, <laughs> and it was a, a, a regular thing from the do. That that. That was created under the, the ADC, Aid to Depend Dependent Children. It, it, that changed when it came to Aid to Families with Dependent Children, because that's when the father was able to come back in the house. Yeah, but I, my, my oldest boy was born in 65, and that's when they were coming to my, my mama's house. I was living with her. I had to. And they was, you know, coming in there uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then when they would come over there, uh, I remember one time my mama bought that TV, and they wanted to know where that TV was coming from. They would ask me questions about did I have a boyfriend, if I was getting money from him, and all that oh, stuff. Oh, they still ask you those questions. Those are, those are traditional questions. They still ask you all of that information. <laughs> That's, that deals with your eligibility. Uh -huh. So yeah, you, you, you can't be you can't be getting money and then asking for money over here too. <laughs> 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 that, that that don't work today. <laughs> okay. You can't tell them. You know, no, you can't. You no, you can't be doing. Well, see, a lot of people don't realize that, that they can end up. We got folks going to jail now. Doing yeah, but like what that. if your boyfriend just wanted to give you like a gratuity? I mean, lay something down on the yard. Uh, Countertop or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. Uh, <laughs> Where's you hear? You hear the hear? Lay it down the countertop. <laughs> I'll put it that this way: it's still you receiving money, and you you have to report it. You're either gonna report it as a gift or as earnings. Okay. <laughs> you kind of you kind of like if he walked out the door and left some money, it yeah. was like yeah, it wasn't no gift. It was just some money. Just had to What's be there. Milk and bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, then you you see they have what is called aid in kind. If you tell them that somebody is okay, just let's an example. Say you get three hundred dollars a month welfare, and you tell them, say, well, okay, somebody is paying my rent for me. I don't have to pay no rent. Well, you're not gonna get three hundred dollars in welfare because part of that three hundred dollars was supposed to be for your rent. You done told them somebody paying your rent, so you don't need that part of it. If you tell them they buying your clothes, paying your PG and E and all that stuff, it's gonna decrease because you got. Somebody's aiding you. You got aid in kind. Yeah. So you can't put no one of your money in the bank. Oh, no. You but can now, have money in the bank. But, I mean, you'd have to uh -uh, account for it. At that time, I couldn't. Yeah, you had to account for it. So, oh, you can so have basically, money in the bank. You just got to tell them about it, and they do have a limit. So they if have I come, a limit. So I, th I believe, kind of like babies thinking that if I come by, see my woman. Let's say this is my woman I'm talking to right now. Mm -hmm. And I come by. Woman. Huh? <laughs> I'm your woman. Yeah, you're my woman, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I come by, and, and she made it one of those really enjoyable evenings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I just happened to have my check cashed with me that night. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to, you know, the way we do sometimes, we just happen to say, well, you know, and I know that you can't talk about the money, so I just happened to leave a little something, something in a drawer. Right. In a drawer that she don't know, and she just happened to, Later on, go to that drawer and find this money. Right. Does she have to talk about that? Yeah. Come on, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. But how I'm many telling others? you the truth. Yes, she has to report that money. More now, when I was on welfare, <laughs> on the on the on the form that you have to they call the CW seven now. Baby. On the form that you have to turn in, yeah. it at that time it was saying if you receive, I believe it was written twenty five dollars or less. You didn't have to report it. But people played with that so much, now they don't got no, you got to report every Everything. dime. But, right. Cheryl, they wasn't giving me but 69 I'm 57. They were only giving me $69 a month for me and my baby. Oh. You know, and I, to be honest with you, I did not have a boyfriend because my husband was in prison then. But, uh, you know, I'm just bringing this scenario up. Uh, you did have to report it. I don't, I don't know how, how many children you have. That has well, I got, only got two now, thank the Lord. But uh, <laughs> at that time, I had one when I had to go on welfare because my husband went to jail. Yes. So, you know. Well, but anyway, um, I enjoy your show and everything, and, and you're an enlightenment to me, and I just love the show. And uh, I want to. Enlightening to oh, um, Yeah, and I want to be just like you when I grow up, Cheryl. <laughs> have a good night, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your call tonight. <laughs> oh, Cheryl, boy, I tell you.
I don't know what I'm going to do. People, you report everything. If you read that form, you have to turn in every month. It don't say except if the money came from here, except they don't have no accepts on that form, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, would you like to take one more call before we take a break? Sure. All right, let's take the call. Call of your life. Well, that's good, Billy. <laughs> Hello, number there, Dorothy. two. Hi, <laughs> Dorothy. But Billy, both of you guys are number one in my book. So, oh, thank okay? you, thank you. I enjoy you, Billy. You always, or you're always so pleasant. You know, you, and and uh, you you just make everybody feel good as far as the Soul Beat members. Thank you. And you too, Cheryl. I always enjoy your show, and uh, I'm just really enjoying the uh, the history. That you've given us. You know who this is. This is Dorothy. Yes. Hey, Dorothy. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Cheryl, and well, I'd like to ask you a lot of questions, but I'll just narrow it down to this. <laughs> um, now, what is your prognosis of the uh, uh, this this uh, uh, five year, um, what is it, limitations of welfare or however, how, how would you word that, to, to give the parents, give the parents, uh, they have, yeah, they have mothers time just five now. years to uh, have, um, either uh, get to be uh, uh, what you call um, to uh, go to school or take a trade or somehow be prepared to work. And mm -hmm. and, and after five years, are they going to just take the mother off the welfare or the children and mother off the welfare? No, the and children will the continue welfare. to receive a, a, a services. The, the children will cont continue to receive the money. They're either going to take one or maybe even both parents off, depending on the circumstances. Uh, if they <laughs> if they've waited until five years have passed by, I mean, they're supposed to be going to school, trying to work something. So what would you recommend for the, uh, uh, the mothers that are on AFDC now, or, you know, fathers, whatever, you know, as far as trying to prepare them either to get a job or go to school, basically to find, to get some kind of profession or what. And I'll take my, I'll just hang up, I'll take that off the air too. Thank you very much, Dorothy. All right, bye-bye. Well, I sort of encourage both, um, simply because we have some individuals that have already been in school for five or six years in basic education and they have not gone past sixth or seventh grade. And these individuals are capable of working. I wouldn't want to set someone up for failure to send, my, send them up to Merritt College, <laughs> 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 where they're going to end up on, on the uh, uh, probation list, because mm -hmm. we have a lot of that going on, when Maybe it'll be best for you to get out there and start off at a, a lower level entry job and work your way up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, learn learn something as you go along, as well as continue with your education. Uh, education is a, a lifelong process. You don't you don't stop that either way it go. But because of the time limits, and now we have more than just that five year clock ticking. We have an eighteen month <laughs> clock as well as a 24-month clock. So there are individuals that are falling in those categories as well. Now, I, during the past few years, I was in trying to encourage people to hurry up and get off and leave some time on the clock okay. for them. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you may need that little $200 later on when you look older. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, but... Somehow a lot of people have slipped through the cracks and this clock is ticking out and, and, and some of them are not going to be prepared. All there are right. going to be some people that are not prepared. Well, we're going to be prepared because we're going to take that commercial break and we will be right back and I'll have more. Uh, Cheryl, are you going to stay with us a little longer? Or is it getting, no, it's getting late. Yeah, it's getting yeah. kind of late and that's my ride over there. Okay, because I saw her eyes get a little dim. <laughs> <I'm riding laughs> and, and it's unlike uh, being out here with just hanging with the fellas because I recognize time is a little different when you're dealing with ladies, and she's a lady. Well, it's not too late. Before I leave, it's not too late. Well, it's really never too late for you to get out there and try to do something for yourself. But you better, you Cal Works recipients, you better get out there and try to become self-sufficient. Uh, there's going to be a, a town hall meeting. I'll bring it up again on Saturday. 
the time clock ticks out in September of this year for TANF. That's the federal regulations. Cal works with the California part mm -hmm. of it. Okay. That doesn't mean that welfare reform is over with people. That means that the regulations that are in existence either will remain and some more be thrown on top of them. And if you're not, <laughs> if you're not there participating, they're going to just write down laws, you know, to do the best they can. If you don't get put a voice in and, 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 and stress what your needs are as a CalWORKs recipient, then they're not going to know what your needs are. Okay. So you're going to have to go to that town hall meeting. I'll bring it up again on Saturday. Okay. We have one more call. You want to take one call? Okay. All right. Caller, you got in. Thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, would you believe I was number one and I had to hang up so you could do that nice history you did? <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever get back here. But you know God works in mysterious ways because listening to your story brought tears to my eyes because I went through the same thing, but only I was called black. Yeah. Mama said, I, I fought. Yeah. I don't think I lost the fight, but I, all you had to do is just look at me the wrong way, and... <laughs> you would, yeah, you would be, you would develop that attitude. I, I look like I could just feel that you needed this whooping because right. I didn't bother anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Well, Miss Brown, yeah. now, now do you see why, uh, you know, when I first come on the show, I don't take a telephone call because my thing is... You know, you can't call and talk to us because we don't know what we're going to talk about. Oh, I appreciate it the way you yeah. have it set up, baby. I yeah. understood that, but I, I got scared you. that I wasn't going to get in because uh, she touched something that I hadn't heard in a long time, and it's really real. But you know, Cheryl, what we went through made us what we are today. I was determined that I was going to be self-sufficient. I was going to be all that I could be. I was going to be, I was going to be to protect myself in all clinches. Mm -hmm. I was going to be ready. My mother used to tell me, if you can talk efficient, if you know the English language, you read, you can talk your way out of anything <laughs> that comes up. And I learned that. I learned how to use the English language. I know, I know how to, I can tell you in three words that you but not bother me. <laughs> 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 but it really... <laughs> I mean, I was threatened by people bigger than I am and everything else, and it was nothing but, let's I look back now, it was really jealousy. And I went home many times thinking I was ugly, thinking I, a lot of things, you know, because you, you, you live on what people around you say. Yes. And I was just as miserable in my house with my family, my mother and sisters, as I was outside. Sometimes I'd rather stay outside than they come inside to hear the ruckus. Yes. But I was determined that I would be all that I could be, and I wasn't going to take anything off of anybody. But through that process, I learned how to, that finesse that, that I don't do to the process, but learning about God, and I'm being honest, has really toned me down, has really made me have uh, humility, made me humble. I'm not quick to jump now at people as I would have been, and I'm proud of where I am today. And by being this guided bait, I'm able to hear and see the talents that he had within me and to use them real well. And like the dolls I make, all that come by being patient, by being able to listen and not go around with a chip on your shoulder about something that happened when you grew up. You got to let some of that stuff lay on the side. You don't forget it, but you you can't wear it around as a backpack. One of the backpacks the kids wear on their back, you can't wear it around like that. You're never going to get anywhere. And baby, you just, I know. I mean, sometimes I know I can sit down and cry. Or I, 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 but you know what's so wonderful? We survive, and we're going to keep on surviving. And, and I like what you said, to him. Education never stops. You must continue to educate yourself on everything and all the things around you. I don't care if you say you're a cook. Keep educating yourself. And, and then you have something to pass on to somebody else, and it'll keep you happy. And, Billy, I want to thank you for... Having Cheryl on tonight, and uh, you are—you're not going to get the award. <laughs> I'm praying for Cheryl. Or even you know, Mona. Oh, hold on, Miss Brown. Now tell me something. Well, you know what, Billy? You got two last time. It looked like those two were too heavy. You fell down on the floor. <laughs> and we don't want to lose you. I thought you had a heart attack. I'm like the baby said. But Billy, you fell down. <laughs> 
But anyway, <laughs> uh, everything that we watch on so be just about <laughs> deserves an award. The way Mr. Uh, Johnson sets it up and the way mm-hmm. he, he nurtures each one of his um, shows. And it's just a privilege, you know, to know that people love each and every one of you. And, you know, we have our, you know, I like this. I like Sobe because we can have our differences and whatever, but we stay as a family. I refuse to not look like a family in front of the camera and off the camera today. I'm not only with Sobe anywhere I am. I can humble myself today, and I don't have to show out and, and say I'm bad because I'm not really bad. I want to be good. <laughs> and, hey, on that note, I'm going to bed. I was on my way to sleep. I got to go to court tomorrow, morning, but I was determined to try to get in to let you know that I really appreciate both of you, uh, and uh, you. I love you. And Cheryl, <laughs> hey, right on, sister. But we Ms. did it. But, Miss Brown, yeah. you can't go to sleep yet. You know why? Why? All night long <laughs> with your Night Talk Jones. Well, Billy, I'm going to surprise you. I got a Night Talk Jones <laughs> laying over in his bed, and, I, and it's calling me. All right. I'm like, good night, Gary. <laughs> All right, baby. Uh, Y'all be sweet. I'll see you Saturday. I'll find it for you. No, uh, and, yeah, oh. I'll see you Friday at 6. Okay, and Jackie, call me because I got that together for you. Just call me tomorrow um, after 12. Okay. All right, baby. Bye-bye. I mean, what is this? What is, I mean, what is this? This is after midnight and somebody's still giving me, you know, <laughs> still giving messages over the phone to somebody that's not even on the air. <laughs> and she's answering. I mean, just like y'all just had a little conversation here. Yeah. No wonder I can't win. <laughs> Cheryl, uh, I got one more. Okay. One more. Okay. She's. I know, but she. I know she. She told me. So I'm gonna. Let her close out the show for her portion. Then I'm going to come back and kick it with the audience a little more. Caller? Hello? <laughs> that was Mamie. That was Mamie. <laughs> that's what Chuck, Mamie that's what Chuck called Mamie. Caller? Uh-oh. This is, this is not Mamie this time. <laughs> Good evening, Cheryl and Billy. How y'all doing? Wonderful. Hi. How are you? Oh, girl, I'm hanging in here, but I'm doing just great. I that's think I'm doing just great. So I must be all right. Did you ever get down here and get your car? Which car? Your, your, your membership card. Oh, my card, C-A-R-D. No, uh-uh, Cheryl, I got to ask. I've been in and out that emergency. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, uh, ain't nothing going to happen to my card. No, Either way, the, uh, the reason, what I wanted to ask you was uh, your personal opinion, working in the um, eligibility and all that. Oh, mm-hmm. wait a minute. Wait, you said her personal opinion. That means one thing for me. I'm not going to talk long, Billy. No, nope, no. Nope. That just means that, you know, y'all just dissing I me. ain't trying to take over, Billy. I know. Billy. Y'all just telling me, get <laughs> out the way. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Cheryl, I sit on the board with uh, Roger Lump mm-hmm. in 1992. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those that sit on the board, and uh, we restructured okay. general assistance. Okay. Uh-huh. And what, what my concern is, sitting on that board and the 10 years that have passed, I have watched the welfare mothers and the uh, working black people go through so many changes, so many benefits are taken away. And yet I sit and I see the immigrants come in, and it doesn't seem to be the same with them. I don't see, I see all the time that our elders here can't get food stamps, but yet the immigrant people of their age get food stamps. I see so many They have people helping them fill out those forms. Do you think that's what it is, Cheryl? Usually they have uh, the organization. Those community organizations, they're pretty close. We, we, we're not, African Americans don't have that stronghold and keeping each other together. And they help, they'll even go down there, they'll come and interpret and, and, and be there with them, with the workers while they're completing those forms. Right. And, and I think that helps out a lot. I think it must be something. But whatever it is, we have got to find find out what it is exactly and to plug up that hole because our people are going under fast and everyone knows that if Chrysler and American Airlines can go on welfare, a woman with children must certainly need some uh, benefits to back her up. There are regulations and, and right now the regulations are even tougher 
than what they were. Uh -huh. And if they got police records and things like that, they may not be eligible to receive services now. Oh, that's sad. Mm -hmm. That is so sad in the richest country in the world. And we're spending, spending so many billions of dollars well, see, for that's, bonds. See, that's partially our fault. See, those are federal regulations. And we didn't, there wasn't no busloads of folks going down there during the time that they were writing up this stuff. Yeah, nobody down there but me, as far as I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just so sad, though. In well, the we sat back and allowed it to happen, and now we have to deal with it. Now, we may have a chance to to, to make some improvements in the system, but you got to participate. They, they're having a town hall meeting. For sure, welfare recipients should go down there. That's for sure. Because you're the one that, that these laws are going to affect. Yep. You know, but I don't know if that's who's going to be there. The only thing I can do is just tell them it's a town hall meeting. When is the town hall meeting going to be this time? It's going to be at the YWCA, and it's on the 30th and... 30th of July? Of this month, yes. Okay. And it's between 6 and 8, I believe it is. I'll be announcing it again on the show Saturday. Okay. I'm not on welfare, but I went down there uh, after the earthquake and um, was a social worker for a lot of the clients. I might just go down there and speak because nothing's got to be done here. If I see another black woman sitting under a bridge with a blanket... I just don't think I could take it. But see, it, it's the county's hands are tied. We need to talk to the state and federal governments. This well, is what a lot of people don't know. We got to hit this at, we got to go to the big house on this one, okay? Well, I've been to Sacramento many a time, and I'm not afraid to go back. So well, if see, you want to get up a committee, they, I'm willing. They, they already have uh, politicians that don't like it, but we're not supporting them. If we already have, we have uh, Erin, she was on the on Sobe's show. She's already been going to Sacramento. She's going out there by herself. We're leaving her hanging out there by herself. Well, I've been to by myself, Cheryl. Let's just get together and I'll go together. I'm willing for my people. I'm willing to do that. Give me a call, Virginia, and I'm pretty sure we can get a few uh, uh, welfare recipients that don't, that don't mind. But you're going to have to do something. you got to go and talk to these folks. We can start off with the town hall meeting on the 30th. Okay, we'll start off there. Right. And I'm willing to go uh, to Sacramento because there's too many children going under. There's too many mothers going under. And I can't see uh, American citizens going under when all the immigrants are coming over here having a natural ball. I just can't. T the thought just, just bugs well, me. Well, see, they're working the system. They're working the system. Well, We're it's about time to learn we learn to work it. this. We're going to have to learn how to work it. We're going to have to learn how to work it and then have to teach others to teach others how to work it. Right. Okay, then, Cheryl. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah, I do realize it's hard, but uh, there are laws out there, and, 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 and it has a lot to do with how you complete the forms that you fill out. Now, just think this way. They used to ask you a long time ago, and I think they've extended that to six months now. They used to ask you when you're out there applying, what have you done in the past 90 days? Why, okay, you need money now. You, you didn't need no money last month. You didn't need none the month before that. You didn't need none the month. Why is it that you need some money today? What has changed in your life? And seeing they're not able to put it on the forms the way it should. You know, and, and that's crucial. You know, what is it that has happened in your life that has changed that makes you now need public assistance? Oh, okay. Yes, because I'm on my way out of here. <laughs> For those of you that may not know, uh, I'm co-host to the Computers and You show, and I come on uh, Saturday mornings between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., and uh, I talk about a lot of things, in including uh, welfare reform and business and employment and computers. So stay tuned on Saturday for Computers and You, Saturday mornings. Billy is over there trying to get the thing together for me. Oh, no. <laughs> Fine, I just wanted to finish up with you in this situation there because uh, it seems like <laughs> since you're number one, you need to be out there by yourself for a minute. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd just go ahead and get out the way for me. <laughs> I don't know, Billy beating on me pretty bad. 
<laughs> but Ms. Dockery, it has been so wonderful having you on the show tonight. Thank you. And much love. And like I said, when we pick up this trophy, <laughs> <laughs> we all going to have big fun with that trophy. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yes, ma'am. So I love you. And I'll be watching your show Saturday morning. And we're looking forward to seeing you on, of course, Saturday at the Soul Beat officially oh, acclaimed day. Definitely. That was on the 30th, the change to the 27th. Matter of fact, I want to say something. I'm going to be wearing uh, a special outfit, and I will be giving a message. Okay, it's, it's going to be a nice outfit. Yeah, it has a little split in the back out, but that is not the message I'm giving. I, I, <laughs> see, see, yeah. they... That's they, right. But you, and, and you'll get the, you have to come to find out what the message is. Mm. you got to come to the gathering mm. in order to find out what the message is because you're not going to find out tonight and you won't find out on the show what my message is. But I will be wearing the attire that Whoa. that's going to be I, I tell you what, I better, message. I better bring my camera. <laughs> 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 Might want to keep the message <laughs> a little while. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much. And okay. we'll be back with more of your Night Talk Jones. Bye-bye.